In the painting, you see that? The, the Africa, South America, North America there? On the feet right there. Yeah. Anyways, the galaxy is up there. And all of the chakras running through the middle of the organism, they all make sense in the sense that they're all a breakdown of light. And he's making a direct interrelationship with the light, uh, the galaxies, and how man uh, transmutes the light through the different aspects of the different circles through the body. He's also making uh, kind of an, an interrelation with the, the circles in the auras, as uh, Severio just uses this as a metaphor for the indolent. A com uh, um, how do you say? Compromising from so many different angles to get the the right illumination, the the fantastic uh, illumination from within. And so he came back from Egypt with a really fantastic idea, and that is alignment. And from where you're standing right now, you can see right into the center, and you can work with this light, and no one uses that light. Why do they not? Because that light is a no-no. It makes these shine. It makes all of the brush strokes too shiny, right? You don't shine it like that. You shoot down to reflect, make all the reflections down. Quantum artists use all different aspects of light to let the painting breathe, even in the night. The night is some of the best time to see a scenario. Tiny, tiny brush stroke, little tiny, miniature. You need a mic microscope to see it. It's all of our eyesight from the way past. These inside here, inside each of the yin and yang, are the different archetypes. The different of all the different characters going down in the yin and the yang. But this painting is made to move. And if you're passing quickly through seasons, through seasons, uh, summer, uh, spring, winter, and fall. And so you pass through a lot of information quickly with the physics. Now when it stops, you see some residue. It's liquid and it's alive for a moment. It's LED light on front, breathing with LED light on the back, breathing. See the red coming through the blue? This is on cycle, that's on cycle. You're seeing something you're not going to see again because the cycle doesn't cross again. Seven times seven, 12 times 12. The likelihood of you seeing the same image is very, very rare. But the idea is, is that open eye meditation in Severio's work and in Casey Tebbett's work is a resistance against the old dogma that you have to close your eyes to meditate. If you close your eyes to meditate, you have to fight the urge to fall asleep. Open eye meditation is an active meditation. It comes to you and it brings something to you that doesn't have any words. It doesn't have any uh, dogma. It has brand new, only art, only new perceptions to it. And then that in itself is a meditation. The reason why it's a meditation is this because uh, your, your eyes are 
in a relaxed position and you're stopping your thoughts. You're reducing the amount of garbage thinking. And that's our uh, subliminal goal as mandala makers. Beyond quantum aesthetics, beyond illuminous painting, uh, Severio is a mandala maker and I make mandalas too. Like a shaman, as we were saying before, bringing the kind of metaphor to a writer so that they can foresee the creation of the universe in writing terms. The, like I was saying, the interconnection between frequency and vibration, the uh, vanishing point, the point of singularity, uh, 11 different dimensions. These are things that are alive in our thoughts now, and these are the new images of time and light as we know, now understand it because we have a new model, we have a new vision of the universe thanks to Antonio uh, and Darianas and Greg Morales and quantum aesthetics and we're utilizing the art to make a new kind of frontier. So the light comes from behind, the light comes from in front and we install uh, different ways to utilize the front of the back lighting and make it applicable inside people's house. The LED light has no ultraviolet or infrared rays and because of it we will be able to see longer and uh, we'll be able to be in meditative circumstances more frequently. And our work is being bought by healing centers and retreats. And that's actually where the money is for big painting. And quantum aesthetic illuminist works. The white now is uh, understood clearly to be um, a combination of red and blue and green frequencies. The images of like Machu Picchu and, and goes through all our from photographic realms, it's mandalas within mandalas within mandalas, and they all change and breathe with this kind of light. kind of light boxes and the painting, see how they're, how it's changing. They're illuminist, they're breathing, they're alive, and it doesn't take much to get them going, but the they'll completely change perception and shape right in front of your eyes. And it's interesting because it's not like Severio's, it's not like Casey's, it's not like, but again, of course, they're very much, because Severio is the inspiration and Casey is the inspiration for Ken to do this with photography too. So the idea with the, with the symmetry, what got me started with the symmetry is that the, Symmetry is used as you've been used to explore the psyche, uh, and this is a photographic symmetry. So it's it has a little bit more depth, like I was saying, than that the kind of the ink blot approach. But with with the idea, these are these are photographs that were taken in nature. But it's more than that. She's connected to the high. She's connected to the hexagon. The hexagon is connected to the light. She speaks with a different kind of a language with the shapes and the solids. He gets it too. 
And to her, she's a woman, and she has that she can relate to these feminine archetypes in her work. But that's not the main subject matter of her work. Her work is the divine healing energy that flows from the earth, from the cosmos, through these women. he calls a blue substance. And a blue substance is a great concept that utilizes the idea of a dark matter, a highly compressed vision of space, a, a, a new concept, a new model of the universe, blue substance. It uh, is um, displayed here on a board and it utilizes um, light from behind the board. Like here, how that light is kind of like a lemon yellow. That really helps to define. Do you see it there underneath it? Yeah, yeah. And underneath here, this one, depending on your angle, you can see kind of a, an electric pink. Yeah. And that, that helps to show the violet on the surface of the front. And the surface, again, composed of like a dark matter compressed from crushed gems set into like a hard resin on the surface. And Severio uses a, a, a mortar and pestle and he mashes his way through uh, stones at an incredible rate and he makes, turns them into loose, uh, settable stones and puts them into a hard resin on top of a board and washes off everything that isn't set so the gems are open on the surface and set into a resin on, underneath. It's an incredible surface, like how he's used the malachite in here, and that one tiny touch of titanium in the center becomes the focal point and a more active point for all the stars. And now with the new lightsaber, we're seeing the idea of a very, very subtle point of light and picking up into different frequencies as well, like into the, into the green frequencies here. Uh, this moon, uh, the name is Luna de los Buenos Cambios, that means uh, moon of the good changes because the, the moon uh, gives the, the changes of the planet. And I use a different kind of uh, crystal, minerals, quartz, uh, amethyst, um, and fluorite, and a lot of things, no? In reality, it's a, a huge alchemy. This one uh, offers a very realistic uh, aspect of the moon and uh, you see perfectly the, the crater and the geography, the lunar geography and uh, the fluorescent color uh, you see very strong when uh, you down completely the light. Uh, with the camera, you need to, to have a special sensibility to, to see, but uh, we want to try to show in the best way. The blue color is very beautiful and gives a sensation with the space. Slowly, but it's very important to have a dinner for this. You see all the changes now. Do you see they start to see the fluorescent, and the appearance is very beautiful. 
with light and with any light. This is a very special moon. The name is uh, uh, Grand Luna Llena, the big full moon. It's a, it's a size, uh, very interesting because uh, with the mineral, with the micas, with the uh, amethyst, uh, turquoise, uh, all the different kind of crystal and minerals, uh, reflect the light like uh, in a screen. So it's possible to to project uh, a film of different suggest. Now, now I prepare uh, some uh, uh, film about uh, impact of native meteor. But uh, <clears throat> also uh, what is interesting in this moon is uh, how change uh, with the light, uh, reflect the light in a very interesting way, and also when you down uh, the light, uh, grow in the dark in, in a very interesting way because uh, you see like a very real, like a, you fly. Thank you. 